Hi everyone, this is Sam from Turnheads. Um, I'm here today with Kieran Lewis, aka K, who's a senior designer at a branding agency called Pulse, based in Covent Garden in London. Uh, and he was also a DNAD New Blood judge this year. Uh, he's a big ambassador for self-initiated projects and he's embarked on many himself during his uni days and even now is involved in lots of different companies, events, workshops to keep his skills sharp and ultimately fulfillment out of his career. Uh, so Kay very yeah. kindly took part in a, a blog piece for the Turnheads website. We we're hoping to dig a little deeper into that basically um, and into the importance of self-initiated projects so I thought it'd be great to focus on those today. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Um, well, firstly, thanks for having me, obviously, on Turnheads. Really excited. Um, and yeah, a bit of background about myself. So my name is Kay Kieran. Uh, I'm a graphic designer. Um, I work full time, like you said before, uh, for a communication agency based in Common Garden called Pulse. Um, but I'm also quite active in terms of doing self-directed work and freelance. Um, so I'm also the freelance creative director for Laville. Um, and I also work with another uh, creative partner of mine called Olga, who uh, we have a self-directed project called Olga and Kay. Um, so yeah, we've got quite a few different pockets of uh, things going on at the moment, which is exciting. Going right back to the beginning of all this when you were studying, um, you mentioned that you got a internship at the Barbican. So I just wondered, yeah, if you could maybe start by telling us a little bit about how you got that position. Yeah, I mean, it was um, it's so weird sort of thinking so far back now. But um, there's one of those ones where, I was, first of all, I was quite fortunate because, um, and this is where it's always, it helps to be in the right crowd, really. But um, it was a good friend of mine. Her dad was the CEO um, of the company. Um, okay. Not having much massive experience yet. I don't think any experience, actually, in, in the design industry. So there's a bit of a a leap of fate on their part to, to accept me which was which was good um but yeah i mean it was a really really interesting experience the whole you know, i was there for nearly three four years actually every summer i was going back um and basically kept that relationship um and the work i was doing uh primarily was a lot of flash work so back right. then flash was quite a uh, quite a popular thing obviously yeah. now it's not, you know very much css but but yeah flash was quite big um so i worked a lot on uh, brands such as uh, for miss dior campaign mastercard um kit kat those kind of brands and it was all very very basic um, almost like banner ads that you'd get or when you go on like msn back then or like google ads you see those little ads that pop up uh, basically i was helping design those um but it oh. took me oh god forever just to try and get your brain around timelines and frames and because obviously from my background it's all very much print um yeah the stuff i was doing was print and when i did the uh, work experience day it was quite digital led um so again it was a case of one you're trying to impress because obviously it's a new job in turn um, and then two, you're trying to get your head around, oh, okay, this is not print, this is digital. How do I now work in that sort of space? Um, so the whole experience was such a, a learning curve um, and the people were lovely as well. So I really enjoyed it. And to be fair, I mean, there's certain things like when you're in the actual, in you know, a working place itself, you just, there's certain things like deadlines and, and timeframes and just, it's the kind of things where you have that obviously in college and university, but it feels like nowhere near as intense as when you're in the working world where you think, okay, I've actually got clients who are, you know, if they don't get it by a certain time, you're, you know, you're kind of in trouble. So in a way, you can have to train your mind into thinking, okay, you know, knowing how much work you've got to do up against how long you've got to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And kind of being strict to yourself and, and being kind of confident with yourself, saying, okay, this is what I can do. And if you actually need help, always ask sort of soon rather than later in the project, which um, I learned on a few occasions. That's always <laughs> good to do, basically. <laughs> but you live and learn. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, rather than kind of sit there in silence and sort of struggle oh, along. Easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, what a problem. But honestly, I think it's much easier to, and I'll probably respect you a lot more to just say, you've got a problem. How do I go about doing it? And then you, you train, you know, you, you learn what they've told you and then you know what to look out for when it comes again. Um, that's the only way you kind of learn, really. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and you also talk about the magazine that you started as well while you were at uni, um, Plog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I thought that was really interesting because you talk about how obviously you learn certain things from going to university, um, you know, the design process and, you know, the software and things like that. But it was interesting how you mentioned that producing a uh, Plog magazine gave you a little bit more kind of business experience. Could you maybe talk us through the process of how that started as a smaller project for university and then kind of grew into being sold in stores? Yeah, sure. I mean, it was, um, oh, crap, we're going really back down memory <laughs> now. So um, 
it was myself and, and three other designers um, and we were all good friends. And it was one of those ones where we had this idea for a magazine, but it was a case of because we were just starting our university, we, there was no guideline in terms of how we get this right. It was kind of just us going on a bit of a hunch in a way. And almost, you know, whilst we had our uni careers going as well, we had this sort of side project that we kind of actively fed into as well whenever we had downtime. Um, and obviously fresh as we all first year of uni is usually you have a bit more downtime because you're kind of flat on your feet. So we thought, you know, this is probably the best time to do a side project because second and third year is crunch time, like you, you probably know as well. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it, it was one of those ones where we had the backing so much from the university lecturers. Um, and that was great because we would do maybe a few design spreads and layouts and we would share it with the lecturers just to get their perspective on it. And so our kitchen would basically be covered with loads of flat plans of like how the spreads would look. It would probably piss off the other housemate. But, uh, <laughs> but it was one of those ones where we kind of turned it into our own little boudoir of, of creativity. You know? yeah. but, uh, but it was great because, again, like I said, we were all good friends. We were all active to want to, to learn whilst this process was going on. And, and, yeah, things just started to grow. And from the first issue, which was a big A4 staple bounded piece, to a much more slicker A5, you know, kind of um, better premium stock as well. Um, and that just came through over time because obviously over time we kind of had a better idea of materials and the stock we could use. Uh, our skills obviously got better as well as designers. Um, and because, you know, there was only a small amount of us in the team, there was a lot of crossovers. So we never had a case of, right, you're doing that, you're doing that. There was a lot of, right, okay, are you available to help out on, on this part? And a lot of that could be, you know, reaching out to potential sponsors um, because obviously students, you haven't got, you know, loads and loads of money. So you kind of need to have sponsors and our printers were our sponsors actually that helped um, with it. A, a group of guys called XY, uh, XYZ who are really, really good printers. Um, I'll just plug them there. Um, but they're, <laughs> they're really, really honestly, they're really good for universities and, and graduate artwork because they kind of really, you know, spend the time with that. And we needed that, you know, just, you know, us lads not really knowing what we're doing and kind of winging it. Um, so it was good to have, yeah, the unis, the printers, everyone kind of guiding us to kind of help us get this project the best it could be. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, every issue we just got better and better. And then before we knew it, we um, we got stocked in a few shops around the UK, which is great. Um, we were involved in Somerset House, Pick Me Up London. Um, and yeah, it was, it was such a cool learning experience. And it was one of those ones where, you know, even thinking about it now, it sounds like you know, we did do a lot of work towards it, but things organically kind of grew. You know, the more we had meetings with lecturers and, and university students to talk about our artwork, the more we kind of built a relationship. And then we just started to, over the years, you know, build our network bigger and bigger. And then the rest is history kind of thing, really, now. Yeah. So how did, you, how did that initial conversation with the printers kind of come about? Because obviously, yeah, the, you know, you haven't got a lot of money as a student. And that is probably one of the bigger barriers, especially for a lot of people out there. So how how do you approach a company and say hi will you do this for free for us you know so it's a weird one because it, there needs to be a balance as well because they also need to see the incentive of why they should be involved mm. and it was one of those ones where you know we never had much credibility to kind of go on by we just kind of had this idea and we had a mock-up um but we you know at first actually thinking about it now we did um pay for them to have the the print in, in involved um so they gave us some money towards it but we knew because of who they are and because of the, the massive connection they've got with various universities around the uk it would be in the long term it will pay off by having them involved so right. we, by you know by having that relationship and, and and saying to them you know this is what we're kind of looking to do this is kind of where we want to be paying attention in the next two three years would you be interested in getting involved in that um yeah i mean they did and it's one of those ones where you know, it's it's kind of on the luck of the day, really, who you, and who you're speaking with, because you, you could get people who are generally interested in this venture and they want to see young people grow and nurture. And then there's other ones who just, you know, what's the, what's the profit kind of thing. So you, yeah. you kind of have to. And then to be fair, if you want to work with those kind of people, I almost feel like the, the relationship, it becomes a bit more stale because it's just all about profit and about money. And there's no fruition or, or any sort of nurture to it but we're working with guys like xy they generally were interested in what we were doing um mm. and, you know it was working alongside them over the years it was so easy and just getting it you know in, in terms of that that balance and them understanding okay these guys are you know they're, they're good at what they do but they're not you know, established professionals just yet so there's certain things in terms of print that they might need a bit of help in or advice and they <clears throat> excuse me they would always help us on that front so that made the whole process just so much smoother 
um yeah and that, that was it really yeah that's brilliant and was it a similar kind of situation with the the shops who were stocking you as well yeah we had a guy called ben and the team who was just uh, he was great he was one of those ones where he can just email and just tailor every email just specifically because it's so easy just to want to send out a mass email to yeah. various stockists but the key is is that you kind of want to make the individual the stockist feel not like it's only them, but you want to tailor it in a way where, you know, I, we were always quite keen on keeping the initial email very short and sweet. Mm -hmm. And if they're interested, then you kind of got them interested in. And then, you know, the second sort of communication, as it were, would be either via a coffee, you know, face to face mm -hmm. or, or a video chat. But we would try to very quickly go from emails to an actual face to face, just because mm -hmm. it's a lot more, more real, I think, you know, by having that communication. Um, and then obviously as well, they kind of, you know, they buy into you as an individual. <clears throat> which also helps as well. Um, so yeah, we you know we were very fortunate to have a few stockists that were really interested and and doing stuff like the Somerset House pick me up London. That kind of sets you up for a lot more potential work anyway. So when when we were featured um, at the gallery, a lot more people started to take notice of, of who we were and um, students got involved with us more than rather than us contacting them. So it was kind of like that nice organic relationship. So uh, yeah. And cool. is, is that what helped kind of push it out to other universities as well? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Like, that sort of network, it was good. Because obviously where we went to uni is Winchester, so it's a very small little, it's not like it's the heart of London where you've got all these other universities kind of around you. It's so tucked away that it's, mm. unless you kind of physically make that effort to reach out, no one really knows about what you do. So we were just quite, you know, we were always curious that so many people and cre creatives are working on different things from all over, you know, the spectrum but you don't really get a chance to have that communication or that, that, that conversation. So why not create something that allows you to almost have like a foundation or a platform that people can, you know, easily access it. People can submit, people can discuss about upcoming projects. Um, and then that way we kind of created like a safe space for, for graduates and um, up and coming students basically. Yeah. And I guess it probably worked in your favour a little bit not being in London because you haven't got as much sort of noise around you. It's not as competitive and things like that. So, you know, if you do start shouting about certain projects that are happening, maybe you will get noticed more because there's yeah. nothing else going on like that. So true. So yeah. it's just one of those, and it's, and every year it just gets more and more competitive. I mean, it's obvious, mm -hmm. but it's just, and even with the current world climate situation as well, it's, it's, everyone's trying to do that little venture that they've always wanted to do or because they've got more time on their hands now. So yeah. in our up against other people who have that same mentality. So it's, yes. it's, yeah, it's a case of trying to, how do you differentiate yourself in a, well full of people doing the same thing as you mm. uh, but yeah it's just basically being active I think as much as you can mm. yeah so in terms of I guess because obviously doing this alongside uni it's already a busy time in your life so how how do you kind of juggle your uni coursework with your self-initiated stuff as mm. well as obviously trying to also get industry experience like if you've got any kind of insights looking back about certain tips that and obviously you've got to have a social life as well. So yeah, how do you is. fit it all in? <laughs> do you know what? I want to tell you, I've got like a little golden moleskin book with all my little secrets and top <laughs> If I'm honest, like back thinking, you know, all those years back at uni, we were just so, and especially, myself, I mean, I was so active to just want to do loads of things. I remember just, and that's probably because as well, even going back to before Winchester. Um, so I was originally doing video game design as a course mm -hmm. um, at South and Solo. And I, it took me a year to realise this isn't actually the course I want to be doing. I'm interested in it, but it's not. It's not my bread and butter, as it were. And um, graphic design is. So I feel like when I went into Winchester and started um, first year graphic design, maybe because I had a year and just thinking, well, was I just winging it for a whole year and now time to be sensible? I think maybe I had that mentality and I just, I was probably more hungry, perhaps more slightly, well, it's not fair to compare to others, but you just, you got that energy to just want to just actively do stuff just because maybe I had a year of just doing nothing really. Um, <laughs> Possibly, yeah. I mean, it was Freshers' Week, so uh, so yeah. But I think um, that's a given, though, isn't it? No one gets anything done in Freshers' Week. <laughs> that's a write-off. Well, isn't it? Because <laughs> I never, because all my friends at Winchester, they were on in halls, and because I was yeah. at Solent University to begin with, my old uni, I technically was sharing a house with the second-year students of Solent. So ah. I got missed out in the Winchester Freshers, but whilst everyone was on campus in halls, kind of you know, actively going to the pub and then back to halls. I kind of had to do the whole, go out to the pub and then kind of get the first train back into summer. Oh. <laughs> but then the irony is I met um, one of the guys in the, in the plug team. Um, and I won't say his name just because I am 
God, it was a crazy night. But one of the guys on the plug team, he, he was the first guy to kind of say, do you want to you know, crash around minds? And that kind of got my insight right. into um, having more of a friendship with those guys based on the campus because obviously I wasn't having to travel back. So yeah, I slept in the bathtub, but we'll leave it. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> it was a weird night because it, was, it wasn't messy night. But Again, I, I don't think you'll be alone in that. I think I slept under a table one night in my dining room. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, so at least, yeah. <laughs> it's more comfortable, but it's really not. You feel like because the edges of the surface, but oh man, it's the worst thing in the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite a safe place. You know, if there's an earthquake or anything, you're sorted. It's fine. <laughs> so yeah so you mentioned as well that you obviously changed courses kind of part way through what um was there anything in particular that kind of made you realize that you were maybe going down slightly the wrong sector pathway or you know was there any kind of what was the moment when you thought oh, I need to change this that's a really good point do you know what I going back I did doubt myself a lot because the course itself, so primarily with video game design, we, we focused on um, a few topics. One was uh, animation, one was live drawing, um, and well, what was the final one? This is how much I paid attention. Um, <laughs> anyway, the one that stuck out for me primarily was the animation, so CGI, computer generated imagery, yeah. uh, and then the live drawing. Now, the live drawing part was actually quite fun because um, it was very much, you know, your interpretation of what you're looking at. It's, it's difficult to have a wrong answer to a live drawing piece because it's, it's all based on what you're seeing and how you're interpreting it. So in that regard, that was fun. That was great. But the animation now, that was a very, very intense course. And, you know, it was one of those ones where I felt like everyone on that course already had a base understanding of it. And, right. and in a sense that they were interested in it, but they also had a bit of skills, very, very basic skills of it. Where I differ was that I had an interest in it, but I never really had much skills in it. And I think it was a case of just because I did a bit of work in college kind of leading into it, but more of my work was definitely more graphic design focused. That was where I should have went with it. Um, and yeah, it was basically, it was one of those ones where at the time it was just, you know, I thought what I was doing was the right thing, mm. but it just took me maybe about maybe the first two three months actually in the course and thinking i don't really know if this is really what i want to be doing um i knew in terms of a job there, there could be a job for this because you know the video game industry is huge so i knew if i got this right i should be hopefully okay in terms of that but but yeah i just thought do i really just want to do it just for the money or do i actually want to get a career and generally enjoy what i do and yeah it just took me a few months to realize um and i was quite fortunate because during the first year i had my interview at winchester um i got accepted and then I still had a few more months still at Solent doing video game design, but already knowing by the end of it, I'll be in another uni. So it was a really weird time because you kind of think, <laughs> being very honest now, thinking how much do I really want to try hard? Because you know the next year, in your first year, of course, you're going to try even harder. So, mm. And actually, that's when I had ideas. I mean, I never started any self-directed projects during that period, but I had ideas for doing stuff. And it was one of those ones, because I had a bit more downtime, I just thought, I want to really make it a good go now the next year of where I do it because um, one, it's a lot of money because you're paying for the course. So you, you kind of think, you know, it's that. But two, um, yeah, if this is the time where you can really experiment and really explore and really have an idea of, you know, where you want to kind of go and who you can collaborate with because once you're in that working world, like you probably know yourself, fix shit gets real basically. So yeah. use that time wisely to just explore. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's kind of a point that I try and hammer home to students in terms of work experience as well mm. just to because it is you're still exploring you know you might have an idea in your mind of what company you want to work for you might think right I want to work for this agency in London and that's it and, and then you just put all your eggs in one basket but then you might get there and you might hate it you might hate the clients you might hate the team you might hate <laughs> the location like anything yeah. about it so I try and kind of hammer that home to say you know go out there explore go to different sized companies who work yeah. on different types of client maybe some more digital based some more print based yeah. some more branding you know and just get a flavor for what is actually out there so that while you're doing your studies you can then start coming up with your own yeah. realistic plan can't you of who you are and where you want to be at the end of this course and it's it it does make such a difference to you i think as well as a as a, a person kind of knowing within yourself where you want to be 100 <laughs> percent. and there's so much things that feed into because if you're fortunate to kind of do you know a bit of work experience whilst at uni 
you, you will know for anyone who's done it, it everything feeds into each other so mm-hmm. the work that you do in terms of all the mentality that you have when you're actually in a working environment it's it's very different to university and you, you know you can only see it when you're in it i think it's one of those ones yeah. that's difficult to describe it until you're actively in the industry mm-hmm. um but when you are you just you know i think it's it's such a, a learning curve to how to shape yourself when you're at uni um you know even discipline as well just just being very strict to yourself in terms of timekeeping because that was always one of my um and I've, I've got a bit better at it now but it was definitely one of those things i struggled with growing up and going to places was my timekeeping because i would do a project and it's so easy to just explore the garden you know go on a completely different garden path or just completely just you know experiment experiment and it's nice to do options of course but you need to be very uh, clinical and very you know to the point when it comes especially when you're, when you're showing stuff to clients because you might get a client who absolutely loves to see various things or a client who just they know what they want and they kind of want you just to do it and <laughs> it's one of those ones where it's the, you know it's the working world and unfortunately so you kind of have to just abide by it but there's always ways to kind of you know be it cheeky and sneaking in it, a separate option if you if you yeah. if you design one if you have the time of course um, and I always try to do that in every job I did just you know an extra piece if I had the time willing so, yeah yeah definitely definitely so what would you say are your main uh, takeaways from your university experience oh main takeaways timekeeping was a was a was a, was a major one um, you know given a project knowing what you're working with. Um, I think as well the ability to to know you know how to collaborate um, and and you know the idea that knowing that you know when you're at uni that is the perfect time to actually collaborate with people you wouldn't necessarily collaborate with if you were actually in the working world um, because you're around all walks of life at uni and I think it's it's one of those ones where you should really make the most of it um, and and work with someone who you might not necessarily thought you would work with or even as a case of like how me and Olga met you know it's, you might not have a definitive, de- definitive final answer to what you're going to produce, but just having that communication and conversation about an idea can easily go into an idea, verb can stem into an actual project. So it's just being basically being open to, to collaboration. Um, yeah, I think utilizing the lecturers as well, you know, the lecturers are kind of there. I think third year, you know, I had a good relationship with my lecturers throughout, maybe because of with Plog as well, you know, because they knew about what we were doing, but throughout first and second year you kind of just feel like okay they're just there to say yay or nay to the work but then in the third year you understand okay these guys do have industry experience these guys know that they know their shit um and actually utilize them you know really pick their brains on it and our lecturers at at, at, um, winchester were great really really cool guys and they just you know they kind of just got it they were very current as well with what's currently going on in the industry so that helped a lot to feed into how you work uh, as well so so yeah I think it was utilizing what you've got at your disposal at your university because once you graduate it's a whole different board game like you know probably so, so yeah yeah it can feel like a bit of a cliff edge I think for some people <laughs> it's a weird time when you press yeah it. yeah so. it is it is so yeah obviously the current climate at the moment is a little bit up in the air for everybody um and companies might not be in a position to offer the internships and take on those juniors that they were perhaps thinking of doing at the moment. So how would you encourage young creatives at the moment to spend this little bit of downtime until things start to get a little bit more back to normal? Mm, That's a million dollar question, isn't it? It's a weird one. It's because, yeah, it is a weird time. And it's one of those ones where because it's, well, not in none of our lifetimes, this has happened before. So Mm. it's hard to kind of have a definitive answer to say that is exactly what you should do. But the only thing I could think is the best thing to do is, is keeping yourself active because it's one of those ones where it could be one of two things really during this period of, you know, you've got a lot more time to reflect and, 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 you know, downtime, you can have a guy on the route of just absolutely binge watching Netflix and being super lazy or actually doing those stuff that you thought you never had time to do. And this is the time to do it. So it's, it's, and I'm not saying to just go, completely crazy and just work 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 because obviously it's good to have the balance um but but yeah this is the time really to kind of i would say work on those projects or, or even just start thinking of ideas for when we go back to a bit of normality you mm. can then actively go out and, and and search for people who you might want to collaborate with mm. um, and I, I would definitely say during this period it's it's a time to you know and i think people are already doing it just reflecting knowing what you kind of want to do as well in the next you know year or so um, in terms of career or in terms of um, you know your own independent projects 
Um, and yeah, just knowing where you want to kind of be, really. It's, mm. it's been a real, I mean, even for myself, it's been a time of just reflection this whole period and just knowing what do you really want to kind of get out of once this whole craziness is over. Mm. Um, so yeah. Yeah, 100%. That's great. And, and what about your uh, Kay and Olga collaboration as well? How did that kind of start? Yeah, so, um, so Olga and Kay, so we, so we started again probably about just three years ago now. Um, and I met Olga, so Olga's from Latvia, photographer from Latvia. Um, and we met on a photo shoot. Um, so at the time she was, I was the model, she was the photographer of the day. And we were just basically talking um, whilst doing the shoots, just about anything and everything really. Um, and then, you know, when you have that, when you meet someone for the first time and you have that, that vibe, that balance where you're like, oh, okay, this person's quite cool. I really like their vibe. And actually, you know, I could see that she was very active in her field of photography and, and she had the ideas of wanting to do so many more projects, but just not knowing how to kind of go about starting it or, or doing it with who with. Um, and I always, you know, because obviously I did Plog Magazine, I had a bit of experience of doing self-directed as well and other stuff I did. So I, I know I could definitely see us working together on something, um, but obviously you don't want to be that freaked and that weird person be like, what can we please on like the first initial get go? So we, um, we met up, I think maybe a month or so after the shoot at South Bank, had about two or three beers and we were just discussing, bouncing ideas of, you know, projects we could maybe do together. Um, and then, and then, yeah, well, our first, very first project we did together was going back to my uh, old hometown in Brixton, so Brixton Market. And we did it for a project for, it was part of Tate Modern and it was, it was called South by the River. And it was basically documenting spaces in South London. That means a lot to you and documenting it through the sound or the space of how it's changed. Um, and obviously Brixton Market is one of those places where it's so, it's, I mean, I was, you know, born and bred in Brixton. So I've sort of seen how it's changed, how it's gentrified, um, businesses, the people, it's all, all changed um, throughout the years. So I was already quite keen on, on wanting to, you know, bring over Olga to this side of the neck of the woods and then get her perspective on how things are, uh, just because the upbringings are so different between us both. Um, and then, yeah, we just, we had good, we had good vibes, we took loads of photographs, um, recorded some people speaking, had interviews, and then, um, and then, yeah, I mean, the rest is history. We, we just actively built upon that and we just started to go around different communities all around London. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, since then, we've, you know, we've done a lot of work with charities as well. Um, mm -hmm. So we've done a lot of work with Westminster City Council, which has been quite an interesting uh, experience because that's kind of led us to do a lot more work in schools and mm -hmm. colleges, um, which, you know, never in a million years I thought I'd be doing, you know, going back to school and speaking to a hall full of 17, uh, no, 17, you must be younger than that, like 14 year old, 13 year olds. Yeah, I was good. yeah, was it senior schools or? Yeah, so said yeah. one was, was one of them. Um, and then there was uh, Greenwich, actually, we gave a talk at Greenwich University, actually, but that's obviously much more older people. But, but going back to the schools, because obviously they, what they do is Westminster, they have an enterprise week um, every year. Um, and basically it would all be from different sectors, but Olga and Kay was more the creative side of the enterprise part. Yeah. So the, 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 the focus on a lot of our talks when we spoke at schools was, you know, still documenting space and, you know, you're at, and where you grew up, but doing it in a way where it's, a, it's applicable for them. So, for example, we were saying, how could you document your own space and things have changed, whether it's maybe you might start painting stuff you're seeing or you're drawing things or, you know, you're recording, you know, your granddad that grew up in a certain area just to find out their perspective on things and how it's changed. And you know, everyone can actively document, but it's just about, how you find comfortable doing it the way you do it mm. um, so yeah i mean it was it was such a learning curve and some of the answers you get you just never expect you know when it's that young as well they just they have no um there's no filter you know no. <laughs> get older they have more of a filter but as you get you're that age you just say what you want to say <laughs> and it you know it puts you on the spot but you're just like you know what if i can if i can deal with a room full of 17 year olds or for, 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 say, you could probably deal with a pitch full of like you know 82 year olds surely. yeah absolutely absolutely and uh, did you get the sense that any of them had maybe thought about a creative career in that way yet or or any career maybe they hadn't really thought yeah. about it but some of them have actively like some of the quick, cause you know, cause we had that whole, the whole outline of the talk was we, we had the talk, we had the projector. And at the end you do the whole, like, does anyone have any questions? And you're always dreading that. Cause you're thinking, oh crikey. Yeah. No one. But seriously, so many people put their hand up and it was just like, oh crikey. Okay. We've way more than we expected. Me and Olga looked at each other and was just like, this is good. We were expecting this many people to put their hands up. But some of the questions were just, it was clear that they've got 
an interest in something creative, just don't know what it is yet. So yeah. You're saying like, oh, I, you know, I love the start of buildings or I love looking at certain things, but I don't really know what that would be. It was like, well, actually, let me look at more architectural blocks. You know, there's ways you can feed into that, that, um, that interest, that curiosity by just even going on blogs or reading things. And, you know, that's, that's the kind of advice we were giving a lot of the young people that if you don't know what you want to do just now, it's not a deal breaker. Like you can still mm. not know what you want to do at, you know, 28, which is possible. Mm. It's a case of trying to get yourself in that mindset where you're at least going on a certain path where it's, it's helping to kind of coach you in the right direction at least. Um, and how you get there and how long it takes to get there, that's relevant. It's a case of just, you know, you know you're going to get there eventually. That's what matters. Well, that's what I feel anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's just finding out what you're interested in, isn't it, ultimately? So that it doesn't feel like work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For sure. Mm. Because people, I mean, it's the working world. It's just, you know, people have to work and they don't really want to sometimes. But you now I always tend to feel with our line of work, we're quite fortunate because you can kind of have a bit of fun with this. And even if you find that you're, you're working in a bit of a dead-end job or, or whatever, um, you can do side projects. This is why it's so important to do those side projects to kind of feed in your curiosity. Otherwise, you're, you're a bit of a robot in a way. Um, yeah. And no one wants to be a robot. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's just best to kind of do, do stuff in your own call. Don't wait for someone to say you should do this. Just have fun, explore, do it. There's no wrong answer at that stage. So, um, so yeah. So you had the opportunity to work with uh, an offshoot of uh, the TED Talks as well. Can you tell us a little bit about TEDx? Yeah, sure. So um, so I, fa- I got myself involved with a group of people, lovely, lovely people called TEDx Houston. Um, and for those who don't know about what TEDx Houston is, um, TEDx Houston is an event that aims to reflect the ideas um, uh, of the new generation of those African leaders. Um, and the idea is that we would uh go on the go to the continent um and speak to various people who are doing incredible work all across the spectrum um whether it's uh musicians scientists uh someone involved in politics just various things all over the continent um and kind of changing that perspective of what people think of when they think of africa um you know there's people do kind of have their own preconceptions of what they think of africa is maybe because of how the media is but actually there's some real real um amazing work being done on the continent so that was basically the premise of what TEDx was about and we would put on um, an annual event um, with sponsors that would get involved and it would be a whole day event and we would um, have the guest speakers speaking um, we would have Q&A's we would have the live band performing all people from the continent as well um, so yeah I mean the experience was was incredible I mean I I first got involved because I saw a tweet on uh, on the website and I knew about them, but not that much. And there's what classic case of, um, because I was looking at the, at the time actively for a design role, um, for a freelance, by the way. Um, yeah, I got in contact with them. We, we had a casual interview, which casual interview is one of my favorite interviews because it's, it's more relaxed. Had a few drinks, shared my work. Um, they discussed all about you know, their ethos and where they kind of see things happen in the next few years. And yeah, we're both, both just completely good vibes. And you know, when you kind of think, okay, these are guys that I could see myself you know, working with for sure. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, that was, what, three years ago. Um, so I guess the last point is, we've got to talk about it. You were a DNAD new blood judge this year. Yeah. How, how did that happen? And how did you find it? And what did you think of the students this year? It was insane. It, do you know what? It was, what? it was one of those ones where, so firstly, it's one of those ones that it's, I, I keep smiling because when I, I remember when I, when I, start university everyone if you're in that creative space you all everyone knows about dnad basically it's just it's one of those ones university lecturers they will keep uh, emphasizing you know it's so important to get involved and to yeah. do stuff or go to events all the time so we all knew about it and you know i actively went to so many events um especially after graduation and i even had a um had a job interview um and it was all these things that i tried to get myself involved with dnad but it just never happened. And I don't know what it was, it just never happened. And then, um, yeah, I was just on the sofa with my partner, just watching TV, got an email saying, would you like to be a judge? And I thought to myself, this is weird how you've gone from that path of actively looking, nothing happens. And then when you don't look, something does happen. So it was, a, it was such an organic process of how they got involved with me. Um, and then, yeah, and then when we went through the process of, of looking through the artwork, it was incredible. It was, so my, my partner as well, so she, she's a, uh, designer but she works for an architectural firm so she's got a you know good creative head and we we both actually looked through the submissions together and uh, obviously I had the in, in the final say but it was a case of just you know just getting her opinion on it as well and it was one of those ones where 
you know, we were just in awe by all of the cool work we saw. And just, I think it was just the ability to just experiment and just really push the ball out. And it's one of those ones where, because obviously for those who, you know, don't, don't know much about the New Blood Awards, it's, you know, it's that linkage between, you know, how do I graduate and how do you get into the industry? So, you know, creating briefs that are set from, you know, industry professionals and allowing graduates or students to, to work on these briefs, um, which kind of gives them a look into how the working world could be. Um, so yeah, everything that we saw was all work for either, I think it was for, so Durex was one of the brands, uh, HSBC was one of the brands, um, and it was, you know, really pro- big, big industry ones. Um, but just seeing how great graduates and artwork and students had their perspective on the brief was just incredible. You know, so you can't really, you know, there's, there's, you find when you're in the working world, um and you've done university you you kind of have you kind of have on your industry hat on and you kind of see things through that lens but when you're graduate still you don't have that industry hat on just yet so you kind of you're kind of open to just anything in that regards and that can be it can be a good thing and a bad thing because obviously when you get older you kind of have to tailor things a bit more refined but at that early stage in your career you should be exploring and having fun yeah. with what you do so and it was it was clear people were doing that in the work so so yeah it was it was awesome and um really enjoyed it really really mm. enjoyed it so yeah yeah and i think that's why businesses love getting interns and juniors into their studios as well because that's the whole two-way street thing isn't it it's it's not just can i come and work for you for free you shouldn't do that you should go in be paid you're going in there and you're being a bit of a tasmanian devil to some degree like (laughs) mixing it up you know we see portfolios and it's like gosh, I need to brush up my skills. You know, I don't know how to do that. And you do, you get the blinkers on of industry and you see these students coming through and it's just, your work is amazing, you know? And plus as well, students have that ability that, you know, they've just, they've just graduated. They, they come off the bat of actively researching for projects that, you know, they're looking at things that are so current. Yeah. When you're in the industry, you could be have a bit of slightly tunnel vision in a way where you know you've got a project, you have to quickly get it out. It's just a totally. quick process and you kind of skip out the idea of <clears throat> exploring things on the web or, or going to galleries. But students are actively having to do that anyway. So yes. by bringing them in, you've got that completely different perspective on how a project could be. So I feel like it can only benefit a, a business by having interns and, and graduates for sure. Yeah, because just as a nature of the job, you do get, you know, you haven't, <laughs> you know that a client won't like certain things or you think, oh, it's not following the guidelines and things like that. And it hampers you sometimes, I think. So it's, it's refreshing when someone comes in and just does something crazy and like even <laughs> flips on his head. Yeah, they might come in and offer a completely different perspective to something. And yeah, I mean, obviously certain clients might never go for that, but some might. And, you know, and it just keeps the rest of the design team in that company, I think, you know, refreshed and, and on their toes and yeah so no that's great and it sounds like an amazing opportunity um to have been a, a judge and uh Definitely yeah and there's hope there's hope as well you know for the work was amazing and you know there's there's right. lots of talent yeah no for sure and it's it's one as well because even before this whole lockdown situation i was always going to degree shows as well yeah so even i even though I, i'm a you know i'm a granddad now but it's back even when um, i graduated even before you know started graduating i was always going to different degree shows yeah. Different universities, either seeing friends who are graduating or just you know seeing what's out there, and I I I really enjoyed it. Not because of the free drinks, but I generally enjoyed it because of because of the artwork. Um, and it was yeah, it was great. And I think you know now we're it's weird now because obviously you know there's the whole social distancing, there's the how yeah. the world is. It's you kind of thinking graduate shows how are they going to kind of evolve with what's currently happening? You know, will things probably be and it probably will be more you know online led, you know Zoom led or or whatever but um it's just adapting isn't it to the current situation of things but um but I, I still think that essence of seeing people's artwork and getting excited over it that, that will never change that it, you know it's just a case of a different space you're working in now that's all um, yeah the essence of it still will be there i think mm. through turn heads i'm really hoping to promote the, the eradication of unpaid mm. internships as well because you know, the, the, the more barriers that you put in place for young people who are just going to fall by the wayside, because not because they're not talented, but because they can't afford to work for free. Definitely. Um, you know, any, anything like that that can, yeah, I think people should be, um, should speak about more and should challenge more. Um, and then hopefully that will uh, change things in the long run. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, mean I, I, I still find it, 
actually discussing that people that interns still don't get paid you know in certain places and you know it's just i've it's it's morally wrong first of all like it's mm -hmm. i know there's no definitive answer to say they they must do it because obviously if they if there's an opportunity to not do it some sadly will take that choice of not doing it because it saves them money but but morally it's, it's wrong and i think you know if if you're trying to you know nurture an intern or and, and show them the process of how the working world is pay is also part of that process so mm -hmm. you know them understanding how to understand finance and it's all part of growing up and and and, and you know in that space so it's, it seems crazy to not have that facet part of the process, you know, just because yeah. it's one thing. So, so yeah, it's, it's all about, um, and being confident as well to challenge it because it's, it's difficult to, you know, as you get older, you can challenge probably more because you have a bit more confidence. But as you're young, I remember thinking to myself, just not asking more, I wish I asked more questions growing up from mm. you know, my lecturers or, or in the industry because, you know, it, it happens to everyone. You just get nervous. You get put on the spot. And you think, am I going to say something that sounds stupid? But I, I had the mentality and I, you know, even with my partner and I, we always said, we'll teach this to our kids that there's no such thing as a stupid question if you don't know the answer. It's Absolutely. Just, and I, I still think that mentality now, mm -hmm. you know, the most dumbest question in the world, if I don't know the answer to it, I'm not afraid to ask. So I, I just yeah. won't do it again, that's all, because <laughs> I know what the answer would be once you tell me. So, well, yeah, exactly. Like, how would you know unless you ask the question, you know? Yeah. So there's no, there should be no such thing as a, as a thing, as a, like, you know, wrong question. And, and even just very quickly going back to the, the advertising world, because that's a lot of the work that I've done as well growing up has been in advertising places. The culture between, in advertising can be, there is a real dark side to it as well. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, don't get me wrong, it's, it's amazing working with these, these brands, you know, who are involved in advertising because it's, it's, it's cool to see your work, you know, um, go on a certain path. But in terms of the culture in, in some workplaces, especially in advertising, it's 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 oh, it's horrible because you can you can have you know things like deadlines or even like pitches, for example. So many times I you know, had to work until you know gone four in the morning, three in the morning, no word of a lie, or, or get and then the next day get a taxi home and then come in the following day. Um, I won't say the name of which agency that is, just to not make them in a bad light. But that that mentality, and I had friends that had the same exact experiences in advertising, so. You know, and pitches are so common in advertising because you're always trying to get new clients. So yeah. that philosophy of, oh, well, you know, you've got to put the work in of that extreme to get it out. But, you know, yeah, you should work hard to get out. But there needs to be a line because it's not good. It's not in for your insanity. It's, it's just not right. You know, and, um, absolutely. And it kind of makes you wonder who you're doing it for. You know, it's, it's like the big fashion houses. I've heard some pretty bad things about about them and, you know, using in interns and stuff for basically free labor and. It's, it's, it just yeah it doesn't benefit the, the creative industries at the end of the day because it just it, 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 it yeah it just puts those it puts those barriers it makes people hate their job before they've even got it so true and then you assume oh crikey is this, this is what i've got to do now for the next like what 50 years like this kind of work and it's just like no like this is only because you're in that space at the time things look quite shit but you know if you then move on to somewhere you then know Right, okay, this is how that last job treated me. This is what I now know what to look out for with this current job. And then you keep, as you go from different jobs, you kind of just build your skills. You build your, you know, you become tougher as well, which is so important mm -hmm. to create. Like, so important to not take things to heart, especially yeah. in your own line work, because oh, no, one, no one wants to hear oh, after, you know, a day's work, right, that's not what I wanted. And it's so common that that can happen. It's just, it can kill. It can really hurt you inside, but it's not, you know it's not a personal attack on you it's a case of the right. client wanting to get it the best way possible and, and obviously by taking on what they're saying you can do your best work as well so it's it's just a it's more of a understanding the bigger picture and the bigger picture basically being that both parties just want to do the best work possible that's it um and nothing should be taken too personal that's what yeah. I think. And, and you're going to make those mistakes a lot more often early on so it's almost the sooner you get them out of the way Definitely. the sooner you can learn how to deal with it and it is a part of work it's it doesn't it doesn't mean you suck and you shouldn't be doing that job it's just it is a, just one of those other learning curves that you need to go through so what would you say are your main takeaways from being a professional designer in in the industry so the dnad was one of them for sure um being a current one um Olga and Kay, again, starting that up, um, you know, doing something off your own accord and, you know, sort of seeing it grow over the years. That steered me a lot in terms of how I should conduct myself in, in my actual full time job as well. Mm -hmm. you know, having to deal with clients and having meetings and, you know, it's almost that idea of, 
you know, everyone gets scared, everyone gets nervous when you're in a room full of people, especially when you're the one, um, the tension's on, if you're pitching or whatever. But we found, myself and Olga, that we just humanised everything we did, literally. We would go, we, even if we're in a room full of people, we're giving a talk, um, just humanising it and thinking, you know what? This is the most scariest CEO in the world. It's just a human being. So regardless of who they are and, and the status of what they've got, they're just a human being. So, you know, if you can kind of have that premise in your head the entire way through, it hopefully relaxes you a bit more and a bit more calm and you're able to kind of deliver exactly what you want to say. So that, that helped a lot with um, my full-time work because of Olga and Kay. Um, and then finally, going back into sort of college days, um, I actually did a thing called Creative Pioneers, which was part of IPA, um, which is part of the uh, Institution for Advertising. And it was a competition which would help young people um, basically get their foot in the door in terms of career experience. Um, and I did it, um, oh God, we're going back for a few years now, but I was part of a class of 2014, I want to say it was. Um, and after the of that, we were offered um, some money towards helping our start up our own side projects. Um, and then we were featured in the Metro newspaper. But those kind of things, it, that, it definitely helped in terms of when we had interviews for job roles, because obviously we were able to kind of say, well, we've done this actively and, you know, as a result, we were featured in things because of the work we've done. Um, so doing that stuff and doing competitions, that kind of fed into how my career developed as well. Um, I always feel like, you know, things only happen when you put yourself in that certain space, you mm -hmm. know, they come to you. Um, and things like the DNA D, like I said at the beginning of the, the podcast, even though I was actually looking so hard and nothing happened, maybe over the years things have kind of was building up for it to happen if that makes sense yeah um, and also bearing in mind the, with the black lives matter movement as well which is current you know as a black creative myself i was always aware that you know businesses are trying very hard to actively diverse what they've got um in terms of the employers and um and different platforms are wanting to have people of color as well have the experiences share experiences so for me i always thought that this is actually a time for us to really you know, hit the ground running and actually to really get those projects underway and to and to just basically just to just do stuff that you felt you couldn't do before and now is the time to do it. Um, and that's not just necessarily just for people of colour, but it's there is that movement that's currently happening. And just speaking from my own personal experience, mm -hmm. you know, as a black creative myself, I'm sort of and I feel like a lot of other black creators as well take an opportunity now to really actively do stuff in that creative space because, you know, this is the time to do it. Um, I've heard I've been fortunate not to have too many um, uh, bad or, or racial encounters in the working world but I've got friends who definitely have been you know as a result of it um, and it's made them stronger people for sure but it's one of those ones where you know unless you're in that situation it's difficult to explain to other people or to have a, a real understanding of it because you kind of have to be in it yourself mm. um, but yeah it's all about just changing that mentality of how people think and it could take a year could take 10 years, but as long as we're doing what we're doing right now, which is good, which we're actually discussing it and having those awkward discussions, which is so important, yeah. um, is awkward, but it's, it's only going to make life a lot, hopefully easier for, for everyone um, in terms of where they want to be. So Amazing. So I guess the main takeaway points then will probably be get some projects going on the sides that you enjoy and collaborate with other mm. sectors, other skills see what happens um yeah just be active in this downtime great so if you would like to see the full blog uh with k you can find that on the turnheads website uh on on our blog obviously um we hope you enjoyed this video uh if you did please give it a like please subscribe and if there's any kind of you know other questions you want answers to or some insight into then please feel free to leave a comment below and uh yeah i'll make sure that it gets made for you basically uh so thanks very much kay that was amazing thank you